morning. Welcome to Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Krieger. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's start with prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Uh, today, um, we're going to read some portions of the parable of the wedding banquet uh, from Matthew 22. This is uh, verses 1 through 3. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Uh, and this is verses then, uh, 8 through 10. Uh, then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. Go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. So if you want to read the rest, uh, you can pause here go to Matthew 22. The parts I didn't read are about the people who didn't come. And then also about a man who did come but didn't dress for the occasion. Definitely worth reading and reflecting on, but in short devotion, uh, sometimes we have to pick and choose. And really, I just want to highlight uh, one big idea for you today. Uh, Jesus started by saying the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. So stated but sort of unstated is this. The kingdom of heaven isn't like anything you know. You've never been invited to a king's banquet. Why would you be on that kind of a guest list? And on the off chance that you personally are so important in this world that you could get invited to some high-profile event like that, another way to look at it is like this. The world you live in isn't like a fancy banquet, despite what, what maybe your experience is. You live in a world where you can wake up and find about a new war that started overnight. You live in a world that has mass graves and where people who filled them up get away with it. This world has suffering and injustice and death, and not a one of us is exempt from it. And when Jesus started to talk about this other world, it makes our ears prick up. He says the kingdom of heaven is different. It's like a feast so lavish you can only imagine it. But I got to say, that's that's not quite it. That doesn't really capture the difference between here and there. Because the way I said it sort of makes it seem like the main difference between, between these two places is that we live in a place where bad things happen. And, and we're talking about a place where fancy food is served. But what does Jesus say? The kingdom of heaven is like a king. It's not a state or condition of the world. It's centered around a person. It's a king, a king who gives a banquet. And so right from the get-go, we see that this kingdom has nothing to do with the best version of this world we can imagine. It has nothing to do with our efforts to make this a better place. It has nothing to do with funding or supporting this side of a battle or that one. In, in this kingdom, it's God who acts, not us. God prepared this banquet, and he wants us to be his guests. And the first people he invited had other things to do. They couldn't make it. And we get that. We get that, what, what it's like when people are always asking us to do things, to come to things, to support causes, and to donate money, and to volunteer our time. It can be exhausting. But this isn't an invitation to report for duty. This is, is an invitation to a wedding feast, hosted by the giver of every good thing. And it's an invitation that inexplicably <laughs> comes to you. You're not a king. You're not a head of state. You're not an A-list celebrity or, or a powerful politician. And, okay, I'll just say this. Maybe in this world you are important. Maybe you are wealthy and influential. I don't know your story. But whatever power or influence or appeal you have in this world, it doesn't earn you an invitation to this feast. If you showed up as you are to this party, you'd look pretty shabby. Because at this feast, when the people are ushered in and take their, take their seats the king shows up. And that's the main thing of this parable. 
And we're invited to see it as the main thing of this life. That we get to be with the King, our Heavenly Father, to be with Him, to speak with Him, to know Him, and to be more than just His honored guest, but to be invited to be in His royal family, not just to visit Him for a fancy meal, but to live with Him forever. There was an old German theologian who told the story about about uh, what happened when his father was laying on his deathbed. His father had this friend who came to visit him and he was trying to comfort him and he was talking about how he would soon be on those golden streets and gazing on the crystal sea. And he's repeating all these vivid poetic descriptions from the Bible of, of what heaven looks like. And the man actually got angry about it. He said, away with such rubbish. All I want is to be in the father's bosom. And he makes a good point. <laughs> heaven isn't about what we get. It's about who we're going to be. So now we're limited to, to view it in, in, in eyes of faith and with hope. And so we're plagued by temptation and doubt because we don't see it clearly. But in heaven, we're going to be wrapped up in the Father's love. And we'll get to see what once we believed. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.